Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Fran Zimmerman and today here with me is Tony Lacazzi. Tony is a fellow member of the Bella Vista Gardening Club and is uh, also a Benton County Master Gardener. Today we're going to talk about how to get rid of weeds, control weeds and prevent them the natural way without pesticides and herbicides. Anyhow, in other words, weeding, completely natural. Tony is the go-to guy in the Bella Vista Gardening Club for all things that are natural and organic, so I'm really interested in what he's going to have to say today. We will also talk about what gardening events are coming up and, and things that you can do to prepare your garden uh, this month for the months ahead. This time of year, Tony, we love to see green things popping up. The problem is that a lot of those green things are weeds. And even while people want to get rid of weeds, we're hearing more and more about the harm that herbicides can do to the environment. And they're expensive and things like that. What can we do so we don't have to depend on herbicides? Particularly like lawns. A lot of people have lawns here. and it's always a problem with, with broadleaf weeds coming up or the kind of grass you don't want in there. What do you suggest? Well, uh, of course, you know, the definition of a weed is an unwanted plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so let's, let's clarify, you know, why we have weeds to begin with. And the purpose of weeds is to cover bare soil. So if we don't cover it, i.e. with lawn grass or a mulch of some kind, you know, turf grass or, or a mulch, then Mother Nature is going to come in and cover it with what we perceive as an unwanted plant. Okay. And the purpose is to prevent erosion. Uh, having said that, the best way uh, to prevent weeds in your lawn is to first have a very healthy lawn. Okay? <clears throat> and to have a healthy uh, lawn, uh, uh, if you're on an organic program, turf grasses, uh, turf grasses respond to organic gardening better, really better than any other plant in your landscape. Really? Yeah. And when you think about soil health, you think about animal life in the soil. Now, you know, the animals that we see above ground, larger animals, they have a hard shell, they have a fur coat, or whatever. Soil-born uh, animals are soft, have soft bodies like earthworms. With the microscopic animals, of course, we can't see. The little microbes right. that are in there. So, and we now know that when there's no life in the soil, nothing really grows and we're learning now that the more life in the soil the better things grow so it's common sense that if you add a byproduct a petroleum byproduct or a chemical to the soil think of yourself as a living organism in the soil and chemicals are raining down on you from above high population of your tribe is going to die okay? mm -hmm. So now there's less life in the soil. So the first thing to do is, A, go organic, well, organic fertilizers and that sort of thing. You'll have a healthier one. The other thing that I notice a lot of everywhere that I've lived in Texas and up here both, people have a tendency to mow their lawns too, too low. Okay. So I never mow mine less than two and a half inches. I'll go to three inches when we hit the dog days of summer. Yes. And when we hit the, uh, we'll tell you this, when we hit that time when we went through triple digits up here for about five or six weeks, if you remember, was about three years back, uh, I, I had a nice green lawn and I was at four inches, okay? Now, what happens well in the weed situation is when the, when the grass is very, very short, you expose more soil, mm -hmm. so when the the weeds, seed weeds, blow in, it's easier for them to germinate, and more light is reaching them. The higher the shafts of turf lawn are, the harder it is for the seed to get to the bottom, and it's in the shade, it's less likely to germinate to begin with. 
So that's the first line of defense is healthy soil and, and nice, thick, dense uh, 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 turf. If you do have weeds, uh, uh, a pre-emergent uh, like uh, corn gluten meal, for example, that's what we do from a natural standpoint, and you can buy at a number of places in northwest Arkansas uh, corn gluten meal palletized. Oh. Um, uh, there are some markets that I, have, uh, I know that have the powdered. Which one. do you recommend? Well, the palletized is the most expensive, but that's what's available in northwest Arkansas right now. Uh, and for some reason, the powder form has, is not as available up here, but if people will start requesting it from their nurseries, we'll see more of these products. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know now, I'm reading that the liquid corn gluten meal is coming onto the market and that may be something that retailers up here might m more likely get into so you could spray to get a nice even coverage. But uh, when I talk about pre-emergent, I have to also talk about uh, weed and feed. Okay. <laughs> you know, everybody's on to weed and feed. And weed and feed, you know, when you think about it, it really, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Because you want your, your weed killer, your pre-emergent, to go down uh, two, three, four, five, six weeks before your fertilizer. Putting them down at the same time is sort of a counter, oh. counterproductive kind of a thing to do. And the other thing is is that the chemical uh, uh, pre-emergents and, and weed killers uh, are laced with atrazine, you know, which is highly, highly toxic. Uh, it kills a lot of life in the soil. Uh, I don't know that I want my 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 grandchildren rolling around in it, or or small pets running across mm -hmm. it, especially after it's first applied, uh, and then even after long term application, where does it end up in our in our water supply? So, you right, know, it, you know, I really find it isn't necessary. So I use corn gluten meal because it's 100% carbon. And you you're adding carbon to your to your lawn. Yes, it, it's uh, mild it's nitrogen. Soft. And it's a pre-emergent. So that's the second line of defense. Healthy soil, have healthy soil, healthy turf, uh, uh, a natural pre-emergent, followed by a natural fertilizer, something that's, uh, that's manure-based, alfalfa-based, you know, that sort of thing that uh, has uh, various meals in it, you know, and feather what meal, should that sort of thing. we look for in the store? Uh, well, you can you can find there's a number of places uh, up here at uh, and almost all the nurseries have some form of natural fertilizer. The big box stores not so much, but uh, the most of the independents uh, okay. don't want to get into a lot of brands and like, right, you want right. Uh, <clears throat> but um, uh, I've I found uh, a wonderful law natural lawn fertilizer at Bradford's, for example. Okay. Uh, they've got them certainly at, at Garden City. Nitron and Johnson has several products uh, for lawns that are natural. And, uh, and they're feeding, not only do they feed the, the, the soil, but they're feeding all the life in the soil as well. And then again, that's the key. And then the next thing in the lawn would be, would be uh, just a weed, you know, spot treating. And one thing that I spot treat with, I, I get this little, uh, just a little spray bottle. Uh, spray bottle that you can pick up for three, four dollars at any, and you can adjust any the hardware spray. store, and you can adjust your spray. And uh, I use a yeah, to uh, you buy uh, just natural vinegar by the gallon. You want a grain uh, vinegar, oh, so not a, apple cider vinegar. No, you want a hundred percent grain. Uh, vinegar and none of the synthetics. You want to make sure the vinegar is made from grain. And uh, to it, uh, you add uh, one ounce of orange oil or orange lemondine. And where can you get is, that? Uh, you can get it at garden centers and you can buy it online as well, but the garden centers have it, you know. And uh, all it is is um, it's just orange juice that's been concentrated down to a, a okay. it's, you know, it's boiled down to where it's highly, highly concentrated. So an ounce to a gallon of okay. vinegar. And then to that, you might add a teaspoon of like a, a liquid uh, detergent, like a uh, dishwashing detergent or something, uh, or even a, you know, a tablespoon of molasses, something to make it sticky. And uh, you can just walk around and you can spot treat 
uh, you know, that way, okay? And it'll burn them on a sunny day. It'll burn them. Uh, I use it all my all my garden paths and my, my cracks in the sidewalk and that sort of thing. And and I'll spot treat in the lawn various weeds with it. And here in Bella Vista, there's a lot of green coming up through asphalt sometimes oh, yeah. near the edge oh, of the yeah. lawn. Yeah. You know, near the and street. It just burns it and it's gone. And nice thing about this is once it's diluted with water from the rains and everything, there's nothing in it harmful to. to that's going to pollute our our waterways and that sort of okay. thing. And, uh, so uh, it's very very simple and uh, easy to do. And then of course there's hand weeding. Yes. You know where you just uh, and I, I old fashioned hand yeah, weeding. If I if I hand weed, I like to hand weed immediately after a rain because they come up really easy. That's the key. <coughs> yes, and, uh, I do too. And then uh, sometimes you get across some really really tough things. And if I'm doing that in a lawn. I'll use a tool like this, like an old carpet knife. Uh, and I like these old carpet knives like this because um, if you are on your, you know, bending over or get down on your hands and knees on your lawn, you can get up underneath that weed, you know, and you can dig mm -hmm. down with it or you mm -hmm. can cut. A lot of people think weeds come back from roots, but they don't. Once mm -hmm. they're cut off, they die. They don't come back from roots. And you can just cut them off. And, uh, and it works really well, gets okay. under up really fast. So Before we go on, I wanted to ask sure. you about this uh, vinegar solution. I'm thinking that it shouldn't be used in the lawn because it'll probably kill some grass, too. That's why, yeah, if you're doing it in the lawn, uh, you want to put it where it's a stream rather than a spray. Yes. And, uh, and you just want to treat just right. the weed. Right, yep. and same with a, a bed that has a lot of flowers yeah, in it. Yeah, if you're around other vegetation, right. Okay. That way. Yep, absolutely. So you have something here that I wasn't expecting to see on this table. <coughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I get people ask me all the time, said, oh, I just hate Bermuda grass. It gets over in the flower beds, and how do you get Bermuda grass out of the flower beds? And I said, well, you have a tool in your house, and every house in Bella Vista, trust me, has one. And it's an old-fashioned flathead screwdriver. <laughs> find nice the, big one. Find the biggest one that you can get. And what's nice about it is, is that um, compared to most hand-weeding tools that have a broad blade on them, the blade is hard to get down through our rocky soil here. That's one thing. The other thing is, is when it's going down through Bermuda rhizomes under the ground, it's cutting the rhizome, so you're leaving some rhizome down below. Where this tool, a screwdriver like this, likes to get down between the rocks and everything, and it's, it's smooth and round here. And when you get up underneath the rhizome, and then you lift, you're pulling the whole rhizome out with it. And uh, uh, I've never had a problem with, and I have a Bermuda lawn, uh, you know, just maybe once every month or two, I'll just kind of walk the edges, and if I see a little bit along the edges, that's how I do it. Uh, getting back to lawns for a moment, yes. we were talking about organic ways to get rid of weeds and lawns. Yes. There are some products out there where you don't have to use uh, atrazine and all those harsh chemicals. Right. <coughs> and this... And there's a lot of them. This one happens to be made uh, from the garden weasel people. Uh, and it's called their crabgrass killer, but it's really a broad leaf killer. Now, this product is made out of cinnamon bark and bicarbonate. Cinnamon bark and bicarbonate. You can ingest this. Yeah, yeah right. You know, I mean, I <laughs> Got always, a little stomach I always, problem. I always tell people yeah. I never put anything <laughs> on my plants and in my garden that I wouldn't put in my mouth. <laughs> okay. Good rule of thumb. Yeah. And um, uh, when the lawn is wet from the dew in the morning, or you can hit it with a water hose really fast and wet it if you had a dry morning, and uh, you want to catch a day when you're going to have uh, no rain for three days. And when you get that morning dew or hand sprinkle it, you just dust this on any broadleaf plant. I'm creeping wild strawberry henbit that's going to be really big right now. Any of, any of those things that you consider to be noxious and they turn yellow and then they die and they do not come back. Uh, and um, 
so there's several products like this that are uh, on uh, brands rather on the market that are cinnamon bark and bicarbonate based. So, so we'll let you know about that. So that's a, a, a product that you would sprinkle on yes. by hand. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a powder. Yeah. Yep. Sort of like Parmesan cheese, maybe exactly, on spaghetti. Exactly, that kind of uh, exactly. The, you good. got the idea. Good. Well, you also have something else back here, and I was wondering if we could talk about it. I know you've talked to me about your favorite hoe. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you have lots of flower beds, uh, which I do, and have had, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, we're all, uh, none of us are getting any younger, and so bending over <laughs> is a chore. And uh, I do it uh, sort of a, uh, kind of like grandma and, and great grandma did, but only uh, took it to another level. <laughs> and uh, they used a big old heavy hoe in their gardens, but of course they didn't have ornamental gardens like right. We have they had today. kitchen gardens. They had kitchen gardens, and they just got out there and hoed those weeds down. Uh, this hoe is more designed for our uh, urban landscapes and perennial gardens and annual gardens and that sort of thing. And this is a piece of drop forged steel. This is this is a gem from Japan. This particular one, but um, there's a lot of websites like Johnny's, and there's a lot of a lot of seed company, and a lot of companies that have these Japanese tools. Yes. And this one has, as you can see, a very 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 sharp edge on it. I don't know if the camera can see that or not. But that edge is very very sharp. I yes. Keep it sharp. Yes. And these, I love these points, really sharp. And you know. You can, it doesn't have to be a lot of work. I find that what happens is, is people go out in the spring and they work like a dog, okay, and they clean up all their flower beds, they yes. cut everything down, they run to the nursery and they buy a lot of stuff and they stick it in and they do that in March or April and then they come back in July or August and go, oh my God, look at all the weeds, you know. And it's really gardening. <laughs> yes. It means it's an ongoing Thing. You, so you know, once a week. So you know, you, you, every a, couple of weeks. We have long. We have many hours of daylight here. Yes. You know, after dinner in the evening, you can walk outside with your cup of iced tea. Yeah. <laughs> and you can have a nice sharp tool like this, and you just stroll through the garden, you know. And if you see a little fella that you don't like, this little guy can just get in there real tea. He's real sharp, and you just cut him off, and he'll be laying there. And when you the next day when you walk through there, he will have shriveled up and returned and added and enriched the soil. You know, it's not a major thing. People, you know, and it's amazing. People say, you don't have any weeds. Well, it's it's just uh, once every week or two, I just do a walkabout with a very sharp little tool like this. So it's, uh, it really doesn't, uh, you know, it's just, it's just maintenance. It's yeah. just staying on top of things like anything else in life. I will know? say some from some personal experience after, uh, oh, I guess last year I was looking around for a hoe similar to that, and I found one similar at Garden City. So right. there might be some, it might be worth looking around at some of the stores yeah, here, Bradford's little, and whatever. Exactly. Yeah. could also order it online, right. but if you're out and about, just take a look. And if you're not into sharpening your own tools, you know, if you're, you know, uh, not good at that sort of thing, you're a lady living by herself or uh, uh, an older gentleman or whatever, and you're not into sharp, these, they have some products like this on the market now that have where you can buy extra blades. You have the tool and the blade, oh, yes. just like, just like straight, you know, like, yes. like razors. And you just change the blade out. Oh. Because the key here is that it's nice and sharp and it's small, yes. so it gets in tight little corners and right. places. And it's lightweight, so this isn't back-breaking work. This is very, very simple and very easy to do. That's great. That's great. So we've been talking about how to get rid of weeds <clears throat> once they're there and also a little bit about the uh, prevention. But there's also mulch and other things that we can use to prevent Right. What's the latest on mulches? Well, of course, yeah, in your in your flower beds, uh, your um, where you don't have turf grass, you've right. got exposed soil. Right. So your weeds are going to germinate. So um, one of the best ways to prevent that from happening is uh, to mulch, and um, uh, in um, 
my gardening philosophy is that there you should never ever have bare soil. You know, in nature you trip typically don't find bare soil anywhere. No. And in in your garden you shouldn't ever have any soil exposed. So, uh, and again, that's one of those gardening things. It's an ongoing process. And what I do is about every couple of weeks or so I do a walkabout again in the evening with a five gallon bucket of mm -hmm. mulch and wherever I see a little spot of soil poking its little, you know, this exposed, a little bald spot. Yes. I just throw some, you know, another fistful or two of mulch on it. The best mulch, God, I know you're going to ask that question. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the best mulch that you can use in your garden are your native uh, or shredded native tree trimmings, um, uh, and fr preferably from your own landscape, or as close to your landscape next door, down the block, a mile away, four miles away. The last thing you want to do is use a product that is uh, trucked in 1,200 miles. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm referring to cypress mulch. Ah. Uh, you know, uh, even though cypress mulch is a good mulch, uh, it does come 1,200 miles away. Right. When we are surrounded by hundreds of millions, I mean, hundreds of thousands of trees. Yes. That we need to be right. cutting trees down in Florida in the, in the swamps. Uh, and, uh, you know, so the added pollution to the air and all that. So um, that's not necessary. So native native tree trimmings, hardwoods, preferably. Mm -hmm. The second best would be from our cedar resources here, shredded native cedar. You know. I have a question for you. What about the pine needles that are fall to the ground? Pine needles are great, and um, there's a couple of philosophies on that. There's nothing wrong with pine needles. Pine needles are a, a good mulch for up here. Uh, in uh, in a landscape plan, however, if you if you're concerned with aesthetics, if you have pine needles uh, on your landscape and you don't have pine trees, they look out of place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's just you know it's an aesthetic thing. It's a you know that's just something to take into consideration. But the product is fine. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and, but I would still say the shredded native hardwoods, number one, number two is shredded native cedar, and number three, you know, is good. And then of course uh, something that we have in abundance, that uh, uh, in Bella Vista, and that's leaves. leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so I encourage everybody and people that have listened to me and have done this are amazed at the, how their earthworm count went through the sand and I said, well, if your earthworm count went up, that means your microorganism count and all the life in the soil went up. So, but shredded native uh, trees, uh, tre I mean leaves, yes. is, uh, is great. And that's what I'm using a lot of now. I'm shredding my leaves. That's what I'm using. Okay, so we have a leaf mulcher and blower. So I use the, the mulching uh, feature, catch it in the bag, and dump it in a, right. a, a container. Right. And just put it up in plastic bags, and and as you need it, just broadcast it out. You know, spread it out. Just put it in plastic bags. Yeah, it'll it, it keeps. Yeah, just, great. You can put it if you put it in your garden shed or tool shed, or um, if you have a crawl space or you know anything like that. It'll it'll keep fine, and just take it and use it as you need it. Will it sort of ripen while it's in the the no. bag? No, if it's dry, you're okay. You don't want to put it in no. wet like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about something I've heard called leaf mold? Well, leaf mold is um, is something that you're going to use more uh, for uh, like potted plants. Oh, okay. That sort of thing. And um, the, a simple way to do that is uh, somewhere in the corner of your property, or you know, somewhere out of sight. Just any kind of large screened-in enclosure of some kind of loose enclosure and um, you know as you're raking up leaves instead of blowing them on to in onto your neighbors or or common property uh, save all those leaves put them in a big giant container have access from the bottom of the mm -hmm. enclosure so you can get to mm -hmm. the bottom and um, after a, several months or a year when you when you go in it in the, the the center of the bottom of the pile 
what comes out of there looks like Prince Albert pipe tobacco. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and it's all crumbly, and it'll, it'll be moist, it'll be warm, and that that leaf mold is a wonderful, wonderful product. You can work it into your garden if you have enough of it, uh, but it's great to mix with potting soils when you're doing, freshening up your pots. Yes, spring, yes. You can mix it 50-50 with basically anybody's potting soil and enrich in that potting soil tremendously uh, and cut the cost of your, you know, your potting soil in half. And it's free. Wow, um, wow. My, my mentor, Dr. Howard Garrett, uh, has a philosophy that no leaf should ever leave your property. <laughs> well, that's so I, great. I, I, I try to adhere to that. I'll be putting mine in, in bags really soon, I can tell you that much, this season. And you well, might want to even get a, a, a little larger leaf mulcher, too, you know, rather than... I started out like you with the one with the, the handheld that blows and mulches, you know. Yes. Uh, when you do in a larger quantities of it, it could be a, a little messy and time-consuming. So. Okay, you good. Might, to... We might want to invest in a little larger leaf mulcher. Okay, thanks, yeah. Tony. That's good. That's great. That's great. I'm going home with lots of ideas, yep. and I hope everyone I else ho does I too. I hope so. I hope so. Well, let's talk about some upcoming events, and really, there's basically one. The Bella Vista Gardening Club is uh, going to be meeting on March 26th. That's our next meeting. We meet at United Lutheran Church on Cooper Road and Forest Hills Boulevard. The topic for March is one thing that I'm curious about. It's called Five Ways to Mess Up Your Garden. And I don't think they mean clutter it. Uh, Neil Mays, who is the Benton County Extension Agent for Agriculture, is going to be giving the program. So that's the 26th. That's Wednesday, the 26th of March. And guests are always welcome. And you'll find out more information about that meeting, about Tony's talk here, and I'll explain that. Uh, on our website, bellavistagardeningclub.com. And uh, I think, Tony, you said you were going to put the recipe for the uh, vinegar mixture um, on there. And um, via the Garden Club website. Yes. Also, I might mention on the Garden Club website, uh, there's a, uh, 26 pages uh, that uh, have in a file there that you can download on uh, gardening the natural way. Great. And it covers uh, pretty much gardening from A to Z, uh, the natural approach. Great. Well, let's review a few things that people can be doing in March for their uh, gardens to kind of, for one thing, it's kind of nice to get excited about gardening now. <laughs> sort through any old seed packets you have. Most of them really do last two to three years. And if you can use them now, um, if they are a little older, you know, two to three years old, Sow them very, very generously. Some of those seeds might not take, but the rest of them will, so sow generously. Um, and plant seeds indoors six weeks ahead of the, um, the last spring frost date. That's about April 10th. Um, in your beds, clean them out. Do any clipping that you need, uh, and that you need, might have missed in the fall, like I'm attacking some that I missed in the fall. Delay it, and it will get the best of you. So do it now. Uh, on your house plants as growth resumes, start to fertilize again. It'll be good for them. It's much too early to move house plants outside. Wait until the nighttime temperatures are 50 degrees or more. Now, roses, you can do your spring pruning uh, in March. When the forsythias bloom, it's time to prune your roses. That's a good um, marker. Uh, plant bare root roses by the end of March. Vegetables, you can plant cabbage, kale, peas, rutabaga, spinach, turnips, and of course um, carrots and radishes are wonderful. Onion sets can be planted later in the month. Uh, start planting vegetable seeds like peppers and tomatoes indoors to be set out in eight to 10 weeks. Trees and shrubs, keep monitoring the moisture and water if it's dry. I know we think it's going to be wet in the spring, but sometimes there are patches of dryness. Trees and shrubs can be planted now. Uh, you can prune your butterfly bushes, your crepe myrtles, and spirea by mid-March, uh, but do not prune spring-blooming shrubs or you'll remove the flowers, like azaleas and rhododendron, for example. And grasses, if you haven't cut back your ornamental grasses, do it now. Um, be sure to do that in early March, as a matter of fact, before the new growth starts. Well, that's it. 
That'll right. keep people busy in March. Right. Thank you, Tony, for joining me. Well, it's really uh, been it, great. It was, uh, it was a pleasure uh, uh, being here. Do we have more time? I don't know. I, I, is there something more you wanted to well, add? Well, you were talking about seeds. Seeds out and, and getting them started inside. You can actually get them started outside. And a quick trick is you get a one-gallon milk jug. You know, with a sharp knife, you cut three sides of it so it's hinged. Uh huh. Drill holes in the bottom. Put four inches of potting soil in it. Put you know wet the potting soil really, really, really good. Put your seeds in there. Put the top back. Seal it with tape. Right on there with a magic marker what it is. Set it outside. You don't have to touch it again. It'll go through ice, snow, whatever. Oh, okay, what a no, good idea! No, no top. Okay. The water will recycle from condensation in it. Okay. okay. And in a few weeks, you'll see all your plants in there, and it'll they'll do beautifully. Okay. So you take off the little plastic cap. Yes. Right. So yeah. there is so that the, little hole is open. Yeah. So the top the top is open. Drill holes in the bottom or punch them. Yeah. Just cut it in half, four inches of po wet wet potting soil, seeds. Put put the top back. Tape the three sides back. Right on there, what it is. Set it outside on the south side of your house. Okay. And so it gets maximum sun and warmth. Exactly, and uh, you can do it this time of year. And if we got a late snow or something, or temperature drops down to 15 or 10, it won't won't affect it at all. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Another tip from yeah. Tony. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, for, Tony, again for coming, and I hope you have enjoyed the program. And we'll tune in again next month. Till then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses.